I have another budget knife I want to share with you today. This time it is the Bison from the Chinese company QSP. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, as always, I'm just going to declare that I did not pay for this knife. It was sent to me for testing and review. However, I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video or for the sale of any of these knives. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go down to the ground where I'm sitting uh, having some lunch. We'll go over the specifications for the knife. I'll give you some close-ups as we do. Then, of course, we'll get out and do some knife testing, and then I'll give you my thoughts before wrapping up. So one more time, this is the Bison from the Chinese company QSP. And if you're interested, QSP stands for Quality, Service, and Price. So what we'll do is go over the knife in some detail with the specifications as I give you some close-ups of the knife. But of course, I'll be providing all that information in the video description below, as well as where you can purchase this knife. Now, I want to set the knife aside for one moment so that I can show you the sheath, and we'll get that out of the way. So this is the sheath that came with the knife. Very simple. It is Kydex and it is very effective, just a fold over design. It is very well formed, including the drain hole on the bottom. Everything is there that you would want. You can see also the mounting bracket with the nylon belt loop. And I've got a comment I'll make about that in a second. Um, it's a good little sheath, nothing special, just a simple, effective sheath. And I'll show you how the knife does lock in quite positively. So you can hear it locks in. I have no doubt that if I shook it hard enough, I might be able to get it to fall out. But honestly, in any normal usage situation, I cannot imagine this knife coming out of this sheath. So a couple of comments on this sheath before we get onto the knife itself. One is, uh, you may have already guessed, I'm not a fan <laughs> of this nylon belt loop, to be honest. I would have preferred something a lot stiffer than this. This is very flexible nylon webbing. I likely will change this out for a piece of leather after this video, but I did wanted to show you as it is. Not that it's not strong enough, because it certainly is. It's just that the way it hangs in my belt, it wants to move all over the place, and it just doesn't feel... Uh, it, it just makes it a little hard to get a hold of and uh, to draw the knife out. The other thing that makes it a little hard to draw the knife at times is that there is no thumb ramp right here for my thumb to work against. So, as you can see, it's a little cold out. And I try to grab onto the knife and use the end of my thumb. I can do it, but it's not as easy as it could be if I had an integrated or molded thumb ramp right there. I'll be honest, that's a very easy thing to do at home, and I will be doing that after this video. All I need to do is heat up and push out a little bit of area so I'll have something to lay my thumb against. Now, there is one more piece to the sheath. Again, let me set the knife aside. And it comes also with a tech lock, which can be mounted in place of the nylon web attachment here, or you can use both of them at the same time, whatever suits your fancy. Um, it's a good tech lock. It's like all the other tech locks that you can purchase. It has a couple of ways of mounting. I'll talk more about that in a second. It does lock on very securely, and these two little bars are so that you can adjust it to the width of whatever belt you are wearing. Um, like I said, it's effective. It works. The only problem is it lacks any real adjustment. You can go vertical carry like that, or you can go horizontal carry. You cannot mount it at any angle. So I would wish that mount, uh, sheath makers would allow you to do some more mounting options with a tech lock like this so you can get some angles on it. Makes it much easier if you're going to draw to wear it cross draw on your belt. Okay, so good sheath. Let's put it aside and get on to the knife. So I do have some cheat notes here that I'll be referring to as I go over the knife and give you the close-ups. So to start with, what is the role of this knife? So once again, this is a companion knife. And a companion knife is a do-all knife, but not necessarily really good at any one thing. Uh, as I, It's a quite a heavy knife, and I'll give you the weights and everything, and of course, in a moment. But the overall... Could it be used for survival? Yes, light survival tasks, but it is not a dedicated survival knife. Could it be used for hunting? Absolutely. It has enough belly and a drop point, actually a clip point, with, to allow it to be used as a hunting knife. Could it be used for bushcraft? Absolutely, it can be used for bushcraft, although it won't excel at wood processing like a Scandi or Zero type of a grind it uh, can. What it does very well because of that near full flat profile is it slices very well. So I use this a number of times to prepare meals with, and I really did appreciate that tall blade providing a long, narrow 
uh, edge down to the bottom. There is a secondary edge on this, of course. So it is a good slicer. It is a companion knife is the best way to describe it. Overall, okay, so the overall design, it is a full tang, as you can see. Uh, knife, it is a clip point design. It has a near full height grind, so I'm going to call that a high saber or full flat grind. You can call it either. I think both are effective in terms. It has a green micarta handle, which is really quite nice with a couple of uh, comments on that. I'll give you some close-ups now. The fit and finish on this knife are what you expect from a for a quality budget knife. There are no extras, as you can see, no liners, nothing special about the knife in terms of uh, aesthetics, just effective. I will tell you, it is a, the scales are fixed to the knife with three set of Torx screw. And I wanted to see what was underneath the scales themselves, so I tried to remove them. They did come off, but let me tell you, it was not easy getting them off for the first time. It's easier now, because in addition to the torque screws for that mechanical attachment, there was also, or is also, glue underneath these scales to hold it to the steel. Now, the reason I wanted to do that is I wanted to see if there was any relief cutting on the inside of the handle to lighten it up, because it just seemed to feel rather heavy. And no, it is solid all the way down the full length of the tang, of, except of course for where there are holes drilled through to allow the torque screws to go through. So that's what contributes a lot to the weight. It's quite uh, tang heavy, if you will. It, it's hard to find a balance point, but it's, it is tang heavy. Now, it's not overly heavy. It just compared to some other knives of its size, it just feels a little heavier in the hand. One other comment on the handles themselves is they are a little bit more hand filling than some other knives of this size that I've tested recently. Uh, however, I find it blocky and as you can see, it's not a hard 90 degree edge right here, but it's not well rounded either. So it, uh, you know, with extended use and bare hands and of course out in this weather, I'm going to be using gloves, but extended use and bare hands, I started to feel the ridges on the corners here at uh, pressing into my hand. What am I going to do about that? Well, that's easy. That's just sandpaper is all it is. I'll just run through a very, couple of grits of sandpaper, roll the edge over a little bit more, make it a little bit more comfortable. After after every few passes, I can test it in my hand to see if I like how comfortable it is. Absolutely not a deal breaker. There is some shape to it, palm swell, as well as a little bit forward here, which I kind of like. There are no scallops right here at the choil area to allow for your thumb to sit if you're using it in reverse or anything. Again, I can fix that with a little bit of sandpaper. Again, not a deal breaker. All right, let's go over the specifications and I'll give you a few more comments on the knife. So the overall length from tip to tang, end of the tang, is 8.875 inches or 125 millimeters. The blade length is four and a half inches or 114 millimeters. It is a G2 steel produced in China and we'll talk about that in a moment. And if the blade thickness is, and that's the thickness of the stock itself, is 4.25 millimeters or 0.17 inches. The blade height from the edge to the back of the spine is 1.2 inches or 32 millimeters. The handle, which is linen micarta, is 4.375 inches overall, which is 111 millimeters. And the weight comes in at 6.98 ounces or 198 Gram. So those are the basic specifications. It is a clip point design, as you can see. It does have jimping right up here. It's effective. It's not overly sharp or aggressive, but neither is it so rounded that you can't use it. Again, I'm not a big fan of jimping. It, having it doesn't hurt, but uh, it's not something I use very often. There is a false swedge right at the clip. Uh, it narrows down a little bit. Of course, it's not very sharp. It's more aesthetics than anything else. Again, it's something I can live without quite well. Here's one thing, though. Look at the sharpening choil. It is huge. It almost lends you to think it is a choil for a finger to go in, but it's too small for that. But it's just larger than it needs to be for sharpening this knife. Again, not a deal breaker. I just prefer to see a smaller sharpening choil. I'm not a fan of choils for your finger. Some knives they have a purpose on. This knife would not be one of them, but a smaller choil would be nice. It does not, however, have a 90 degree spine. It is rounded on either edge, so it will not strike a ferrocerium rod. It will not 
peel bark or, or, or fuzz down any wood or fat wood or anything else. If you want to modify that, I don't imagine it would be too difficult to do so, and I may do that with this knife after this video. But as it is, this spine is, well, I'll tell you, it's comfortable for carving, but it's no good for anything else is the best way to describe it. All right, those are the basic specifications. I think I can show you pretty much everything about the knife in some fairly close detail. One comment I'm going to make on the steel right now, because it'll affect how I do the testing of this knife, is I have not had an issue with this knife in the three months that I've been testing it out in the woods, but this steel does seem to have a reputation from some people of being brittle. Brittle mean that it does not like lateral forces. You will not see me digging this into a log and prying sideways on it, because there is a risk that the tip will break off. Unless it's a survival knife and you really need to do that, I don't see the purpose of doing that with a companion knife, so you won't see me doing that with this knife. I have not had an issue with the knife, but I understand some people have with, I don't know about this knife, but at least this steel when it comes from China. Okay, I think I've gone over the knife in sufficient detail. It does have a lanyard hole, as you can see, and again, I only use these lanyards more for if I drop it on the ground, I can find it again type of thing. It's not for holding on to or anything else. I think it's time to do a little bit of light wood processing to show you what it's capable of. So of course there's one thing that everybody wants to know if you can do with your belt knife is will it baton? So let's talk about batoning for a second as I set up to do it. This is quite a big piece of wood. It's only about 12 inches long, but it is two and a half inches in diameter. It is hardwood. It's from a maple tree that was well seasoned here. I will split this with the knife, but I will tell you this is not something I would choose to split a piece of wood like this with. Obviously this is more the realm of a big knife like my Tereva Scrama or an axe. So I will do that. I do have some smaller pieces that I would split on a regular basis that I will split so I can use them for batoning. But you can see this knife just barely spans the top of this block of wood. So let's get this one through. Now, I don't think my baton is going to be heavy enough, but we'll check and see. So, so you may ask, why am I doing it then? If I, this is not something I would do. It's more not a torture test, because I'm, I'm not a believer in torturing testing knives, but more to demonstrate that if you had to, you could do that with this knife. All right, so I think that demonstrates the fact that you can baton, yeah, maple it is, you can baton a stick that large if you had to, and again, it's not something I would choose to do. However, this is a piece of black spruce which is notoriously hard to sometimes split out all by itself because of the twisty grain and uh, little knots that exist all through it. But it is nice and dry, and this is what I want to see if I can't feather once I get it split down. I can see it's slightly out of focus at the very top, but you'll be able to see it once I get down through. So this is about 16 inches tall, just over an inch, inch and a quarter in diameter. Well within the wheelhouse of what a knife like this should be capable of. Since I don't have a wood log that I'm splitting on just the hard frozen earth, uh, I always like to stop just short so my knife doesn't go <laughs> into the earth. All right, so we have one piece here. Let's see if we can't cut this a little further. It's wild to watch this follow the grain as it twists through down through the length of the wood. All kinds of little knots all the way through. Probably can see those knots on there. I think I gave myself a challenge trying to find something to feather. Let's split this one out and then we'll decide which one it is we want to use. Found itself a little knot. There. Okay. Oh my. Okay. So, which one are we going to choose to feather on? I think it's going to be this one. There are still knots, not ideal for feathering, but for purposes of demonstration, I think this will work. Let me just turn the camera a little bit so you can get a bit better view of what I'm doing. Okay. Let's give it a go. See what happens. I wouldn't call this the best piece of wood. That's, you don't always get the choicest piece of wood. 
So all I'm trying to do now is establish a place where the curls will stay on the stick and not drop off. Not that that's the end of the world, of course. Looking for all those nice little edges that I'm creating going down. Moving over, finding more edges. Now I'm finding the knots. And what happens when, of course, you find the knots is your knife wants to jump and you lose your curl. But it's still working. So it is not a Scandinavian or zero grind. It's not I, the best for creating feather sticks. But I think you can see that it's doing the job. I think I can light touch. Getting curls with at least five twists or curls in them. All right. Again, not a great feather stick, but it demonstrates that it will do feathering. Will it do notching though? So let's uh, reposition the camera. We'll do a little bit of notching with it. Okay, so what is a basic bushcraft task that you may have to do besides fire prep, everybody gravitates towards that, which is of course a legitimate use of any knife that you're gonna take with you in the woods. Well, creating things out of wood, such as the simplest one of all, tent pegs. So this involves basically two skills. Now, once again, not the best piece of wood for doing this. I probably would have used a full round of uh, wood for this demonstration, but I think I can give you just enough of a demonstration that the knife is capable of doing this with this split off of that black spruce. So the first thing, of course, you want to do is to create a pointed end. Now, for me, the easiest way to create a pointed end is the chest lever. Loves those knots. Stay away from that knot. All right, no awards for being the quickest or best shaped tent peg as far as the point goes, but I think it demonstrates that this knife can be used to hug off great bounce of material. Now, normally I would do my notching while I have this supported on something else from below, but I can do enough here safely to demonstrate what it is I'm doing. Oop, sorry, out of frame. Now, there may, even though the, the spine of this knife is not sharpened, which is, of course, something everybody wants to have in a bushcraft knife, um, this is one I can appreciate the fact that it is rounded because I'm using my thumb, as you can see right here, as a lever to scissor the knife at the tip for carving purposes, and boy, oh boy, that is so much more comfortable than it is when it's sharpened. So there's an L7 that'll make this work as a tent peg. All right, some very basic wood skills that you would ask of any knife you take with, into the woods with you. I think we can probably wrap this video up with a few comments. Okay, before we wrap up, I'll give you my thoughts on the Bison from QSP. So the overall impression of this knife is high value, good looking knife, well worth considering if you're looking for a budget bushcraft knife that will serve all the tasks you would ask of any knife when you take it into the woods. The things that I like most about this knife is, despite my warning, the D2 steel. It has proven for me to be very strong and the heat treat on this is spot on. I've had no chipping, no rolls, none whatsoever on this in the three months of regular testing, even doing the type of batoning you saw me doing a minute ago. Uh, it can be a little bit of work to bring an edge back, so my motto is it's easier to keep a knife sharp than it is to sharpen a dull knife. So on a regular basis, I'll go home, I'll run this down some ceramic rods and then strop it just to keep the hair popping edge. And I've noticed no deformation of the edge whatsoever. It's also a nice looking 
satin finish on this D2 blade. Um, those, are, those are what I like most about it. Medium level things are the fact that it has a rounded spine, comfortable to use as it is for curving. It should have a flattened 90 degree edge for all the typical things you'd want from a knife with a 90 degree edge, such as ferrocerium rods and scraping of fat wood and the like and bar. Um, that's easy enough to remedy, as is the fact that I also mentioned the blockiness of the handle, the linen micarta right here in the edge. That'll be just minutes of sandpaper work for me to fix that. What I can't change about it is the overall weight. The fact that it is solid through the tang, not a deal breaker. I would like to see it a bit lighter, but it's only going to remove, remove a few ounces at most. Uh, the other thing is, and I haven't mentioned this before, is the length of the handle. That's because this is going to be specific to me. 90% of the people will not have an issue with this, but as you've heard me mention before, I have a double XL hand and a knife handle of that length is small for me. This is just on the border of being too small. You can see that the pommel on, on it is, or the pommel is disappearing into my fist. So it works, but just, just barely. I would like to see it a little bit longer. Being a companion knife and not being specifically designed for bushcraft, the pommel here where it curves down, nice as that is for the grip, can be a little uncomfortable if in the reverse grip, pushing into the, the uh, meat of my hand right here. Not excessively so, and certainly not if you're wearing a pair of gloves, but uh, there is a little bit of point right there that, again, not a deal breaker. Also not a deal breaker, I just don't understand why it was done like this, and that is this extra large sharpening choil. Again, doesn't get in the way. I just would like to see the sharpening show a little smaller than it is. So that might be just nitpicking on an otherwise overall very nice knife, especially for the price of that it comes to you. Uh, yeah, the sheath is functional, as I mentioned. It has some minor things that can be improved upon easily enough, but I suspect that most people will be happy with the knife just the way it is. But at the price that you can get this knife, if you have some things that you want to change, you're not going to feel bad about altering it in a minor way. Okay, those are all the thoughts I have on the Bison from QSP. I will put all the information, including the specifications for this knife in the video description, as well as where you can purchase one for yourself if you're interested. If you have any comments on this knife or or any of the knife testing that I'm doing, please put those in the comments section below. If you have any knives you'd like to see if I can get my hands on for testing, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.